Hi everyone, Aisha with Retro Handhelds. We have some really good news for the RG35XX because we now have RetroArch on it thanks to Black Seraph. Before we get into that though, if you want to stay up to date with everything we're doing, make sure to follow us on our social medias. They're going to be linked down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe. Okay, and like I was saying, we now have RetroArch out for the RG35XX. And this is all thanks to Black Seraph who decided to put it out for free on his Patreon. So in order to get that, just go ahead and head over to the Black Seraph Patreon. We're going to put the link in the description. Download the files, extract them, and you're going to have two folders and one readme text. Go ahead and open up that text and follow the instructions just like they're laid out there. The first one is going to be to create an image of the SD card. This I'm assuming is in case you want to go back to the stock OS because once you make this, this change, you're pretty much going to be stuck on it until you reflash everything. Okay, once you have that unzipped, you're just going to follow the instructions, replace a couple things, and you're going to be done. That's it. It's pretty fast. I think it took me maybe five minutes. Now, one thing to remember is when you put your SD card in there, there's... At least for me, I got a bunch of pop-ups saying that I needed to format the SD card in order to be able to use it. Go ahead and ignore that. Don't do it. Don't erase anything. Just close that out and follow the steps as it is laid out. Once you're done, you're going to take that SD card, put it back in there. You're going to boot and you're going to get be right into RetroArch. And it's going to look like this. Now, before I get into this one, I'm just going to show you how fast the actual boot time is. So let's just go ahead and restart that really quick. You're going to get this screen. And there you go. So the booting process is actually really fast and that's a good thing because uh, we don't have a sleep function anymore in this. So instead of having a sleep function with the power button, what we have now is the power button is gonna control the brightness of the screens and you have five different levels. Once you cycle on through, you're just gonna go right back. And there you go. We're gonna keep it at the brightest right now just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on on screen. That's one of the things that we that we do lose when we go into RetroArch. We don't have a sleep mode anymore. Um, that's unfortunate, but I'm sure that's going to be get fixed pretty soon. This is uh, this is the first release, so there's a lot more coming. Features that we are getting though is uh, we now have all the RetroArch functions, which is going to be like fast forward, safe states, aspect ratios, all the other stuff that a lot of us wanted from the stock OS are now gonna be available with RetroArch. We are losing the simplicity of the OS that came originally with this, but you know, you gotta you gotta trade some things here. Once we're in here, uh, this is the menu that we're gonna have. And from here, we're gonna set up a couple things before we actually get into the games. So the first thing is, is actually creating a playlist so that's easier to get to all your games. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into playlists, open it up. Mine are already loaded because I already did this and heads up, this can take a while. Some systems just take forever to load up. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, it's gonna take some time before you actually get back into the games. Once this is done, it's really fast to get in and out of games. So, you know, it's uh, think of it as an investment of your time. Once we're here, we go to import content, scan directory you can do this individually but it's just going to be much faster if you go through this you're going to go down here where it says mnt and then mmc once you're there you're going to find all the folders with all your roms in there and then you're just going to go through and select them scan directory be patient it's going to finish it's going to do its thing and then when you're done with that they're all going to show up here now all the cores are already downloaded, so that's that's pretty nice that you don't have to worry about doing all that, especially because there's no Wi-Fi on this. So unfortunately, no retro achievements and no updating cores, at least not directly from the device. Again, I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more options in the future, but this is where we're at right now. Now, once those lists are created, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up some hotkeys because right off the box, you're gonna get menu for menu. Obviously, you're gonna be in game, press that, it's gonna bring you right back to the retro arch menu. And that that's good. Uh, a lot of you might like that and want to keep it that way but personally i don't because i like to have fast access to fast forward and i don't want to set hotkey i'm not a big fan of having to call down select and then r2 uh, i know this is huge first world problems but that's just me so what i did instead is set my menu as my frame throttle and the way i did that is go to settings go to input and we're going to find hotkeys so right here is where we're going to do all of that. So you just swap them out. Instead of having menu for menu, I just press start and select and it takes me back to my menu. That way I can keep this uh, function button as my 
um, frame throttle and I don't have to assign any other buttons. I don't have to do any more key combos, none of that. So that's just a personal preference of mine. You can set it up however you want to, or you can leave it as is. Now, once you have that done, we can start getting into the games. For me, I didn't have a, that much trouble actually getting the correct aspect ratios. Like Game Boy Advance just booted up right into it. Unfortunately for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, I got a four by three aspect ratio and I didn't really want that. I want to keep them as is. So let's get into some games here and I'll show you how it looks right now. Okay, so there you go. Now. It's booting up in the right aspect ratio. Unfortunately, it wasn't that like that right out of the box. But all you have to do is go back to menu, go back to the main menu, go to settings, video, and you're gonna go to scaling, and you're gonna just gonna go keep aspect ratio. There you go. Once you're done with that, you're gonna go back into your quick menu, go to overrides, and you're gonna say this is a core override. I already did all of this and so I'm not going to do it. But once you do that, every game that runs with this core is just going to go right into that aspect ratio. And that's it. If there's a certain game that's not played in the correct one and you want to fix that, that's how you do it. If you don't save it as a core override, it's not going to apply. So when you restart the system, it's not going to be, it's not going to run it that way. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of the downside to RetroArch. It can be a little bit finicky sometimes. It's not, it's not the most plug and play option. But if you're somebody that really likes to tinker and set things up just the way you like it, it might be a good choice. Anyway, that one's already working uh, as it should. And really, Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, they're all going to run perfectly fine on this. So there's really no point in spending a whole lot of time there. One note I did want to make is that uh, in the original OS, uh, for some weird reason, some Game Boy Color games were still black and white. As you can see, when I loaded up Pokemon Crystal, that wasn't the case anymore. So everything's loading up the way it should. Okay, now we're going to move on to GBA. And here I have one of those games that I always like to throw on here just to see how everything is running. This is going to be Final Fantasy VI. This is the restoration patch rom you know it's a long name I, I i'm pretty sure i got it right this time um anyway this one is running at 59.73 so basically 60 fps and right now in the menu so now let's get into game see when i fast forward we got 169 frames that means it's it's got plenty of overhead to run and that's just one of those things that i like to do with some of these games if uh, i don't want to spend a huge amount of time just waiting to see how it's going to run i just boot the game up press uh, frame throttle and see how high it can go that usually that's usually a good indication of how much room you might have it might not be the most accurate way of doing it i'm sure there's other ways but you know for these purposes it tends to be it tends to be pretty good all right so now that we're actually in game um one thing i'm noticing is that the frame rate tends to dip under 60 and that's one of the reasons why i always pick this game because it tends to be one of the harder ones to run and it looks like this one is struggling a little bit. You can see right there that it actually goes back up 112. But then once we get back into the overworld, it should actually drop back down. So we're sticking at 95. So it fluctuates a little bit, but it never gets too low to where you're really going to be noticing anything. But yeah, in battles, it does jump back up. Now, if we're running something a lot easier like Pokemon and all that, it's not really going to be a, a big issue. This is just one of those games that I like to test and it is for the most part going full speed so let's move on to something else and here we have donkey kong and if you're wondering yes i'm keeping the volume low on purpose <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get copyrighted for and the stock from where this game tends to have a couple stutters here and there so i really wanted to make sure it showed this one you can see it's running full speed and to the there we go so we have plenty of room to run this game so yes super nintendo is going to run better on this side and you know donkey kong surprisingly is one of those games that does give you trouble and i remember when i first got my ps vita and i loaded up retro arch on it i wanted to test out some emulation on it because everybody always says just get a vita and i was surprised that donkey kong was giving me issues I had to uh, overclock to get it to run. And even then, there were some worlds where I would get some pretty big frame dips. Like, uh, when I got underwater, <laughs> I actually went down to like 40 frames per second. And I remember thinking, wow, I can't believe... Uh... Oh, man, I messed that one up. I can't believe how crazy it feels in here only to realize, wait, it's not that the world feels slow. It's just that my game's running slow. But yeah, anyway, story time, you know wanted to share that really quick but yeah it looks like donkey kong's doing pretty well so 
Should be the same for uh, Genesis. Usually Genesis is a lot easier to run, so we're not really gonna get into that one, especially because this video isn't really meant to be a full on emulation test, it's just kind of an idea of what to expect. We're gonna move on to PlayStation 1. And here we have Crash. Now, unfortunately, I had issues with Crash. The frame rate um, dips down, and I'm not sure what's going on there. I, if I'm not mistaken, it, this was running better on the other OS. I could be wrong though. I'm not 100% sure on that one. But I was very surprised that this game was giving me issues where I tried some other PlayStation 1 games that had no issues. Then again, those are, could be just be easier to run those games like uh, Alundra, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8 I tested out too. Those didn't give me any issues, but this one tends to drop down. And uh, when I press fast forward, as you can see, it does get faster. Oh, and I died. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm, I probably just have to mess with settings a little bit more. I might have something off. Um, this is a, a pretty early build. This just actually just came out yesterday. So, but I'm fairly confident this is just a, a settings issue. All right, so here we have some arcade. Uh, this is Gundam. I'm gonna be honest here. I forgot the full name of it. And it's running at full speed. I believe there's also some room to speed things up. Yeah, there you go, a little bit, but don't really see why you would want to with this game so yeah you are gonna get plenty of arcade games that are gonna run pretty good this is an easier one and it was fun so I decided to show it Let's as you can see I have really have no idea what I'm doing here <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I showed a vertical game yeah so this is one of those things where if you really want vertical arcade play probably stay on the stock firmware until something else comes out you can set this up but it's just not going to be as comfortable as what they already have. And I, see I haven't even really mapped my keys correctly here and I'm getting destroyed. Yeah. So vertical play or Tate is still an option, but you do have to set things up. I'm not an arcade guy. I don't really play a whole lot of arcade games instead of maybe some metal slug here and there. So fortunately on this one, I'm not your man, but I, you could remap everything. So let me just show that real quick. So what you can do with something like that is come over here and go on um, controls, program controls, and then just change what everything else is doing. So let's see if we can just get, um... so I think I got that one right. So once you set all that up, what you're going to do is exit back and then you're going to go remap file. And here you have a couple options. We're just going to save this as a game remap file because we don't want it to go everywhere. Go and now we're gonna resume. And it does look like I kind of messed up a couple things here, but oh no, I think I needed more buttons. So, yeah, you as you can see, I kind of got it working, but still, vertical play is a lot easier on uh, stock firmware right now because you just load it up and you're good to go and then you can get to use the volume buttons as uh, A and B or one or two, I guess it would be more applicable. It's doable, you just really have to mess around with it. But I guess that's kind of the thing with RetroArch is if you want things to work right, you're gonna mess around with them. But yeah, let's let's move on. Okay, so like I was saying, this isn't really gonna be an emulation test. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what you could expect if you decide to leave stock firmware and come over to RetroArch. Is it worth it? To me, yes. It's for everybody, no. Uh, it really depends who this is for, who you are. If you just wanna load things up, get in the game and not have to worry about settings and just you just wanna play, period, then stick with it, how it comes out of the box. If you want to mess around with things, if you want to tinker, if you like RetroArch, if you want more options, then yeah, uh, RetroArch. I mean, make that image back up. You can just go right back to how things were if you don't like it. Me, I think I'm going to stick with this for a little bit longer, keep playing with it. I'm really enjoying the device. One note I did want to make is uh, unfortunately, this thing, when you first get it, and this might not be a big thing for everybody, but it was for me, these rattle a lot. I've heard this is the same with 353V, but as you can see, mine don't rattle anymore. Anymore. That little bit of sound is actually from the volume there, volume key right here. But mine aren't rattly. All I did was just take the back off, and you can see there. I just added a tiny bit of electrical tape just to make this a little tighter. And there we go, no more rattle. Now, for a lot of people, it's not really an issue because your fingers tend to rest here anyway, so it kind of stops it. But for me, it was annoying me, so I had to fix it <laughs> it's a minor thing it's not really a, a quality thing it's just something like hey i don't want it to rattle so i fixed it there you go 
Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you make the decision. Uh, again, not the most in-depth video, but trust me, that is coming. As soon as we get some other options, we will be coming out with a full-on emulation test. And we are going to be revisiting this one a lot because I have a feeling this thing is going to give us a lot of uh, material to talk about. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you got yours. Let me know what you're going to go with if you're going to stick with Stock OS or if you're going to go with RetroArch. And if you haven't yet, you ordered one, let me know what you're thinking. Does it, this video help you? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.